Madeline and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top 5 tips on how to save money on your groceries. Because if you save money on your groceries, then that means you have more money to spend on food, right? But on a more serious note, I am a college student on a budget and I think I have a system that works pretty well for me so I thought I would share some of my tips with you all so hopefully you can save some money too. And you can spend that money however you want. But personally, I would spend it on food. My first tip, which to me seems kind of obvious, is to go vegan. Now, a lot of people think that the vegan diet is, for some reason, more expensive, but when you think about it, all of the cheapest items at the grocery store are made from plants. For example, bananas, beans, rice, potatoes, all that stuff is way cheaper than buying meat or animal products, and it's way healthier for you too. Now, a vegan diet can get more expensive if you start to buy alternative products such as fake meats and cheeses or other packaged snacks, but personally, I don't buy a lot of those just because I prefer not to eat them, and it's definitely cheaper just to stick to a whole plant-based foods diet. My second tip is to buy in bulk. Now, a lot of grocery stores will have a bulk bin section, which is basically just a aisle of the grocery store that has bins of various stuff, such as grains like rice, buckwheat, oats, some lentils, dried beans, and I think they even have nuts, trail mix, and dried fruit as well. Because this stuff doesn't come in a package and the grocery store can buy it in larger quantities, it's usually at a cheaper price. And it's more convenient because you can pick the exact amount that you want versus having to buy a set amount that comes in a package. If your grocery store doesn't have bulk bins, that's okay. This tip can still apply to you. A lot of food items seem to be sold in different sizes and usually it's cheaper to buy the larger size. For example, you can buy a really tiny pack of rice that's only gonna last you a week or you can buy a gigantic bag of rice. And this tip sort of segues into my next topic, which is to look at labels. Now, all grocery store labels will have a unit price or the cost for the item in total. That's the big numbers you see on every label in the grocery store. But they'll also have a price per weight, which is smaller and it's usually in the bottom or upper corner. And we'll say like, 15 cents per ounce or whatever. Personally, I think this price is a lot more helpful because it tells you how much you're actually paying for the amount of food that you're getting. So this relates to my last topic because usually you can tell by this label that it is cheaper in the long run to buy a larger bag of a certain food item, even though it's more of an expense up front. Also, it's important to compare store labels with brand labels. Usually the store brand item of food is a lot cheaper than the brand label and it's pretty much the same product, especially when you're buying things such as beans, tomatoes, pasta sauce. It's all made from plants, so it's all essentially the same. For example, I looked at tomato prices and as you can see, the Whole Foods price per weight is a lot cheaper than this other brand's price. My next tip is to stock up. So I always stock up on non-perishable food items, and by that I mean items that have extended expiration dates, such as things that come in cans or dry grains that come in bags, and even frozen vegetables and fruits last a pretty long time. So for example, when beans are on sale, I'll buy a lot of cans of beans, and they last for like three years, so I'm definitely going to use them all up before they expire, but I'm saving money by buying them all now. And if you don't have a lot of pantry space and feel like this isn't feasible, I totally understand because I live with two other girls and I don't want to totally take over the kitchen, but I actually just store my extra cans in a small corner of my room and they don't take up any space or really bother me at all. My final tip is to shop around. Now if you've seen some of my grocery hauls before, you know that I go to two stores a week right now, but one is within walking distance of my house and I buy all my produce there, but then I go to another more commercial grocery store and buy my non-perishable food items but I go to about three or four different commercial grocery stores in total, but I definitely don't go to all of those every week. So the more you go grocery shopping, the more you'll become familiar with the prices of different items at different stores. So for example, item A may be cheaper at store one, but item B may be cheaper at store two. So I think about what I need every week and depending on what items I need more of, that's the store that I choose to go to. So for example, if I know I need a lot of beans, I prefer to go to Whole Foods because their store brand beans are all organic and have non-BPA linings, but they're the exact same price as the beans at my other grocery store and they're not organic. 
but when I need other items such as frozen vegetables, I don't go to Whole Foods because they tend to be more expensive there. I definitely suggest writing a grocery list as opposed to just going to a grocery store and walking around the aisles, but if you are a person who just buys whatever you feel like once you go into a store, I also suggest checking out the sale ads. Most grocery stores will post ads online about their produce that is on sale for the week, so if you really want grapes and there's grapes on sale at one grocery store, you can choose to go there instead. Alright guys, that sums up my five tips. I hope some of those were helpful to you and if you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments and I will try to answer them as best I can. Alright, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!